Uh, Jonathan Gatehouse is in Rio for McLean's. And uh, he seems to have survived so far. At least uh, he's joining us. So that's a good sign. Uh, do your, your plane got there in time? Yeah, you know, I don't have one of those uh, sad uh, oh. put-upon journalist horror stories to share. I, uh, I got on a plane. It took off. It landed. I got here. So Yeah, it's funny. You know what? I've never had those either. Um, toilet always flushed. Bed was always made. Shower always worked, although I wasn't in Sochi. So, I mean, put an asterisk there. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you know, yeah, I, I didn't have a shower curtain or a rod for a few days in Sochi, but uh, that was the extent of the hardship. And, and it's I Russia. You don't need to shower anyhow. You could just fit in with the rest of the people. Oh, oh, oh let's, let's, let's hear the calls. Um, but Four one six eight seven zero. It's just bad. Yeah, I think uh, I, I will say that uh, that it appears that they're flushing all of the sewage from the media village Oof. into the adjacent field. Uh, so it's it's getting a little ripe over here. But other than that, oh. everything's fine. Uh, our friend Adrian Arsenault of CBC TV took a helicopter trip uh, above Rio with uh, a, uh, I, I, I don't know if it was a biologist, it was a, or an environmentalist, I should say. Um, I was watching it in the National the other night, and they were up in a helicopter, and they could smell the sewage. I mean, they could smell the sewage in a helicopter, high, 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 high in the air. Yeah. That is scary. It is, it is, it's not difficult to, uh, to figure out where it is, you know, you... Uh, Every once in a while, you're even in a bus or uh, passing along a roadway, you'll you'll come across a ditch, and you instantly, or your nose instantly, lets you know what you're dealing with. Um, of course, the opening ceremonies are tonight. We're joined by Jonathan Gatehouse, who'll be covering the Olympics uh, for McLean's magazine. You know, it, it seems as if Brazil, the the organizing committee, I should say. It almost seems as if they're trying to spin these logistical and environmental issues. They're almost trying to spin them into some sort of indication of a more uh, realistic or, or off-the-cuff Olympics approach. You know, they've, they've even tried to marry the whole thing to the IOC, the 2020 vision concept, you know, which just essentially pays lip service to the idea of a scaled-down, a more realistic Olympics. You know, we've heard about how the opening ceremonies are going to be more analog than digital, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, how much of that is fact and how much of it is just, as I said, just panic-spinning of uh, you know of a situation that really that that really isn't that good. Well, listen, I think I think it's it's a bit of spin to try and you know put lipstick on the pig, but at the same time, I mean, the reality is is that this is an Olympics without bells and whistles, and probably not even a kazoo. Uh, you know, they ran out of money. I I, I think the venues are going to be fine. It's you know the. It's the competition itself. And that's where the money's been put into, and I think it's going to go off fine. And, and the venues, especially those like down uh, in Copacabana, are, are really spectacular. At least the backdrop is spectacular. But you know, when you come to things, they don't. There are no banners in this city, right? The things you're used to seeing in mm -hmm. the Olympics with the logo plastered everywhere. Well, that they don't have money for that. It's not here. And, and you mentioned the opening ceremony, right? It's it's going to be, I think, relatively bare bones and. Uh, you know, they can't hide it because they just don't have the resources to deal with it. In conversation with Jonathan Gatehouse and McLean's, what what are your initial your initial reactions, or what were your what were your initial, um, you know, your initial takeaways when you got to Brazil and you got out to see some of the facilities or the, the Olympic Village, or just getting out and about? Did 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 you detect a you know a thing that's just kind of a bubbling, brewing mess, or are we? Jonathan, talking about what we usually talk about at the Olympics. Every every Olympics is going to be a calamity. There's going to be a terrorist attack. Things are going to fall apart. You know, cars aren't going to run. Planes aren't going to fly. Buildings aren't going to build. Whatever it is, and you know, stuff generally ends up coming off okay. Uh, are are you detecting any difference with this? No, I think I think it's really the latter, Jeff. I mean, you know, this is going to go off. It's going to be fine. The athletes are going to perform. They're going to win medals, and everyone will instantly forget about all of the whining and carping and, and calamities that have been predicted. I mean, there are problems, as I say. I mean, the, the sewage is an obvious one. Uh, transportation, I mean, this, this is a really sprawling, spread-out city, and the, and the venues are, are, are spread out, and getting from place to place uh, for both, you know, for athletes and for media and for the people, the spectators, is going to be difficult. But at the end, you know, I think so much of this seems to be through the lens of how first world nations, you know, uh, perceive yep. faraway places, the same thing happened in Sochi, right? That, I mean, 
Sochi was by no means like a perfect Olympics, but it was also the, the, the fear of terrorism that kept everyone away. Well, I mean, I don't know if I've ever been anywhere where I was safer you know, mm-hmm. behind, you know, multiple layers of barbed wire and, you know, whatever it was, a hundred thousand cops and soldiers, you know, it was, uh, it's the same here in Rio. I mean, Listen, last night, a, uh, a Russian vice consul, uh, who was actually a Brazilian lawyer, uh, shot and killed a robber just outside of the Barra Olympic uh, site. But, uh, you know, that seems to be uh, the exception and not the rule. Well, and, and you know, there, there's, I mean, I was, I was going to say that that's, there, there's street crime everywhere. And I, I mean, I think that's, you know, I guess the concern on the part of a lot of people is that it appears as if, you know, Brazil, it, it, it's not just necessarily terrorism and the threat of a major attack, but it's the whole the whole aspect of street crime. But, you know, I mean, people have been in cities where that, that had a reputation for street crime, you know, places like Athens and things like that. And there's always there are always going to be isolated incidents of people having money stolen or being pickpocketed or whatever. But it is true that eventually once the competition starts, uh, most of the focus tends to go to the athletes and and. And, yeah, and that, and which is how it should be. Which is how it should be. Yeah, yeah. There's. I, listen, I, the, the security presence is huge. Uh, I was. I spent the day kind of walking around down in Copacabana and, and Ipanema yesterday, and everywhere you went, almost every street corner, uh, either had a soldier or, or a group of cops standing there. Many of them uh, armed with assault rifles. I don't think, you know, you don't feel unsafe here. Uh, I don't think tourists are going to feel unsafe. I don't think that there's a, that the incidents, I mean, this this thing last night outside of the Bar of, uh, bar of the Olympic site was like a Jason Bourne takedown. I mean, this uh, couple of guys on a motorcycle tried to uh, come up and, uh, and, and break, uh, mug this guy and his family while he was sit, caught in traffic in the car and, he fought them off using his jiu-jitsu school, uh, skills, disarmed one of them, and shot him with his own gun. That's awesome. I mean, that's, uh, that's pretty spectacular, but again, I think that's going to be the exception. And he's a lawyer? He is a lawyer. <sighs> uh, I think uh, <laughs> he's in Lawyer Hall of Fame now. I was going to say, that's, that's a guy I want. That's a guy I want when I get a speeding ticket. Uh, Jonathan, the, IO, the IOC yesterday decided to prove the entry of, I think, 270, something like that, Russian athletes um, after a International Court of Arbitration ruled against barring athletes with prior doping sanctions from competing. We're now in a position where there could be individual appeals of bans launched. You know, we could essentially find ourselves going into an event where all of a sudden here comes, you know, a Russian athlete wins his appeal and, and, and finds himself in the middle of the event. How much of an issue is this for the IOC and how much how much is the whole question of, of of steroids and drug testing hanging over these olympics because it, it seems in a lot of ways it's always been an issue we've always talked about it but at least my experience in beijing and london was it wasn't as out front as it is now well yeah i think it's no longer a dirty secret right it's out in the open and people have had to deal with it uh predictably enough you know the ioc lacked the moral courage to to go the distance and, and do what they should have done in, in banning Russian athletes. They, they punted it to uh, the various federations who, as you know, are not exactly paragons of virtue themselves. Mm-hmm. So I think you can be relatively confident that this is going to be a cleaner game than it might have been otherwise. It won't be clean. They never are. But, you know, there's, there's a, the willing suspension of disbelief that takes over for, for you know, uh, for fans and for the media, things happen all the time in sports that are too good to be true. And we just tend to get caught up in the moment and go along with it. And, you know, there will be moments here where people will come out of nowhere and shatter records that have stood forever and by a large margin. And mostly people will applaud and think that's great rather than maybe drawing the obvious conclusion that these things don't happen on their own. Jonathan, we're going to let you scoot. I know uh, you've got a couple of other media responsibilities today. Stay safe and enjoy the Olympics, and uh, we'll be talking to you again. Thanks, Jeff. You know what you want to check out for music? Try, uh, I found a new one, uh, Low Cut Connie going down to Rio. Low Cut uh, Connie? One. Low Cut Connie. The song's called Rio. Okay, we're on that right now. Thanks. Take care.